Hello. Welcome to Tuesdays to be continued. Stampin' All Day with Bev. We are going to continue on with the brushed bouquet bundle. Hi there. Hi Karen. Um, it's on page 63 of the current catalog and the pouncing technique and the stamps in the set. I also want to remind you about celebration. You have a few more weeks to get free merchandise from the celebration catalog and the more to celebration added items. Hi Joan, hi Joyce. So um, we are gonna start in one minute but um, just a reminder that celebration is still, hi Jill, um, going on and take advantage of that. So the things I like to take advantage of during this time is becoming a demonstrator because you get so much more um, during celebration. If you want information about that, please email me and or call me. And um, getting all the free merchandise say you buy the uh, cut and boss machine just going to get celebration items for that if you need it or a set of um, family of stamp pads and those types of things you, you know you're going to get that plus free things so it's just a great great time all right i think it's two o'clock it is so let's get started let me turn you down and i forgot to say happy valentine's day hi debbie i have on a big red heart for you Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you all have a nice day with whomever means a lot to you or just in your memories. Yep, just in your memories. I remember, I'll share this with you. I, my dad was on dialysis for 13 years and on Valentine's Day a few years, he's been gone now four years, um, I picked him up. I Actually, well, when I dropped him off, he said, I want you to go to my wallet and get some money out and I want you to uh, go buy yourself a plant and I've treasured that plant forever still and then he said I want you to take your mom to a jewelry store and let her pick out any diamond ring she wants so we did that and I think and it was just his sweet hi Latrice his sweet sweet way he loved loved my mom so much um, she said oh, I don't know which one to pick hi Shelly and I said, well, dad said there's no limit. So if you want two, you can get two. And she said, oh, no, no, no. And she picked a beautiful ring. And that's just a memory I have of a loved one that's gone on this special day. But I'm sure if you have any, you can sit and think about those today. I told my husband, do not buy me any flowers. So he went grocery shopping and he brought me my favorite candy bar. If you can believe that. I need to lose two pounds. I have been eating myself to death with all my friends and things that have been going on and so I've got to lose two pounds and then he brings me a candy bar. Can you believe that? All right, let's turn down and get started. So anyway, happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Let's turn down. And Pinky says hello. Oh, I guess I'm in a story mode. My little my grandson's girlfriend, who was with us in Idaho, thought I was the old lady Looney Tune with uh, my pinky thing. And she, she would just stare at me and kind of look at me kind of weird, right? She's uh, 22. So yeah, I could see where I'd look like the crazy grandma with my pinky everywhere I go. And um, anyway, they stopped and got something for uh, dinner yesterday and then they were playing a game and there was, I noticed this little chick next to um, Janae and Janae said tell Grammy I have my own pinky now although she can't steal my name it's a yellow chick so she I'm gonna talk to her when she gets home tonight and say hey we have to name her something else you have a little chick I have a pink flamingo so anyway I guess she didn't think I was as nuts as I thought because now she's bragging about her own little pinky I thought that was so funny 
So anyway, thank you for sprinkling all of those uh, people that do that for me. That is how I grow, and you have no idea how much I appreciate that. So thanks again for sprinkling, sharing, and telling others about me. I love it when you do that. Here is my host code for February. So if you shop with me and you have an order that's under $150, please use that host code. If you forget, don't stress about it. It's okay. I can add it later. So just um, if you think about it, that would be great. And tell people about my YouTube channel. And YouTube channel, you are growing. Thank you to all that watch me on YouTube. And if you have a friend that has Facebook, tell them about Facebook, Stampin' All Day with Bev. Here is my email if you need to contact me. That would be great. Hey, Rosemary. Uh, that would be great if you contact me on uh, my email address. All right. I picked out two great prizes. These are, well, it's one prize, but it's two items for this month. It's the adhesive sheets since I've been using those and showing those to you. And we all need bling, right? So if you place an order with me this month, you could win both of these items just by having your name placed in the random wheel and if you're selected then that's what i will either bring to your house or mail out to you let me turn this up just a little bit okay so here is the card that i made on sunday everybody seemed to like it a lot so i am going to continue on as i do on tuesdays hey debbie um and show you more now on this card i used the dies and I showed you the little ribbon technique, and I uh, added some the irresistible uh, dies in there, and the font from the irresistible bloom set, and the milky um, little embellishments. Let's see who won that today. I'm going to use the stamps in that set. Yes, I am. So who won this card? Cindy. Cindy, you won this card. I do need your address, Cindy. So if you, hi Carol, if you can email me your address before Sunday, then I will mail this card off to you. All right, Cindy, congratulations. I hope you like it. Um, I do have some more snail mail that just came today. Actually, we had turned off our uh, our mail while we were gone, and today. I, got, I had lovely surprises. Look at this happy birthday card that I got from my manager, Karen Flores. Isn't that pretty? She used those contour scallop dies. Who doesn't love those dies, right? And this is an oval punch that's retired, but it's just a great card. This one is from Sharon Buckner. Sharon is a customer and friend of mine. I love this fold. I haven't played with it yet. But look at her great coloring. Oh my gosh, Sharon, you, if you're on or if you see the replay, you did a fabulous job. And I love the little cupcake um, at his wing. It's just a darling card that made me smile. Thank you so, so much. Then from my friend Audrey, I, you know, I do not share with people this information but somehow she knows how my hair looks every single morning. So I don't know how she knows that, but this card made me giggle so much because that's exactly what I look like in the morning. And it's an easel card. Very, very cute, very fun. Thank you so much, Audrey. And then this beautiful card came from my friend Karen in Texas, Karen Kirshner. Look how beautiful this is. Thank you so much, Karen. Hi, Connie. I love all my cards. They are going to stay in the den for a little while, and then I'll bring them out here and put them in my shop. All right, I wanted to remind you there are a few more things for celebration. This is the flyer. So if you already have, yes, it is gorgeous, Debbie, isn't it? If you already have all the things that you want from the catalog, the celebration catalog, then you can look here on the more to more to celebrate items that are available now. A lot of people are buying this 3D uh, B high folder, and so um, and there's a clouds folder and DSP, all kinds of things, even dies for a hundred dollar order. So don't forget about those extra things. Phew, 
long-winded, am I? All right, so with the technique that I shared with you using the brushed bouquet dies, I was asked questions. The questions were, can you use that pouncing technique on other dies? The answer is yes. The look you will get might be different. These are just perfect dies for that technique because they're so detailed, they're so big, and they have a lot of um, image to capture with the ink. For my open house, the first Thursday of every month, I have an open house where you can just come. All you need to do is RSVP. I showed the pounce technique on this bit of the sunflower. Now on camera, you can see that it's slightly tinted because this dye is very intricate and I had thin areas to pounce um, ink on, right? It looks bold and bright because of the big sunflower underneath, but the subtleness of the pouncing technique on this part of the sunflower I thought was gorgeous and also with the foliage. So that is the pouncing technique used on the sunflower set. So yes, you can use all your dyes. All you are gonna wanna do is play with it and see how it comes out. And today I'm gonna give you some hints if it comes out too light for you on what you can do to make it darker, okay? All right, so that's one technique I'm gonna show you. The other technique I'm gonna share with you today is using the stamps from this set. And I did pair it up with the sunflowers since we just talked about them. And I also know that a lot of my customers have ordered that sunflower set and it's one of their favorite sets. So I combined this brush bouquet bundle with the sunflower set. I'm also showing you the polka dot um, folder, how it works with this basics 3d embossing folders grouping that you can get in march we're going to be using the polka dot today and i also teamed up with the alphabet a la mode again i pointed this out to you before but i want to show you how it looks with this technique that i'm going to share with you right now all right what else is that? oh here's the sunflower set in case you're saying what sunflower set what sunflower set it's the Celebrate Sunflowers. Here is the item number. I don't know, this set's been in the catalog for a long time, so if you fall in love with it, I would suggest you get it before the catalog goes into its retirement mode because it might be gone. Let me pile these back up in the right order so I'm not looking for everything later. Um, I, I did use a multiple, multiple colors as, again, these four here this time and my blending brushes okay so let's start with the technique that I'm going to teach you with the stamps so I just have a little piece of cardstock that I know will is big enough for me to use my dies on when I get to that point but we're going to start with the stamping so here is the rows, two steps, a larger rose and then more detail to go inside if you want to use it that way. And I'm using gorgeous grape ink. So on this stamp, I'm going to look at them and pick a bottom. So where these four large, um, let me see, petals are, these four here. I'm using that at the bottom so I can line the detail up the same manner. So tapping onto my gorgeous grape and I'm just going to go full strength on this whole thing. Usually I would go lighter with a second but I want a dark image for this technique. Now I'm going to pull it down as far as I can get it with staying in camera Hi, Irene. So I can line this up. Now these four petals that I pointed out, see the voids in here? You're just going to put these three petals in that area. Because it's photopoly photopolymer, you can see that you're doing that. 
and stamp down. And then you have a full rose. Now why the two step? So if you wanted to use two colors for a variegated rose, light pink, dark pink, red pink, all different colors, you could do that very easily with this stamp. All right, now I'm going to take um, some, another color and another stamp. Let me see, I'm looking, there's the one I was looking for. This one, it's like a mum. And Crush Curry is the ink I chose. And I'm going to stamp it next to the rose. And again, I'm just going to try to fill up this area of the cardstock. I'm gonna leave that open in case I need it again. I might, this is for Flirty Flamingo. And I'm gonna take the other smaller flower. Let's do right here. No rhyme or reason where I'm stamping them. Each one's gonna look different. And there we go. Then, using old olive and I'm going to get some leaves in here let's see in there mm. designing this as I go like I said each one will be different the main thing is color getting color in here okay I think I'm going to do this again in the gorgeous grape just to fill up my paper faster. And I'll go sideways this time. Now I need to turn my paper so I can line this up. I'm paying attention to the four petals there and the three petals down here. Bring it low so I can see what I'm doing. And there we go, very easy. All right, now let's fill in some more. This is pink. Let's put some here. This was the crushed curry, I think. Yep. Let's put some there. And then let's get the bigger leaf, which I didn't do at all yet. Just some color. Doesn't matter how the image is going. We just want some color. Now, did you see how I did that? This stamp has, I didn't even explain it. This stamp has three leaves on it, but I just leaned it for two because I didn't want to go over that flower. I'm so used to doing that. I, I just did it without telling you. So I don't know if you've ever thought about that before, but let me do that again. Well, this isn't a good example because it's off the paper more, but I'm just leaning it to that one leaf and that's all I get. Good idea, right? Let's go to, let's add a little bit more of the purple. Not that I need all this, but just, okay, that's good, just because. Now, there is a little tiny circular, a little tiny circle for the middle of all your flowers. For this technique, that's not important, but I wanted to show you that you can fill in your centers of your flowers with this little circle. Okay. Then you could take, if you wanted to, let me close up all my stamp pads, you could take um, a blender, a blending brush is what I should, should have said, and you could um, hit it with your um, bone folder and get the little spreckles all over so let me do that. Let me put my stamps all back. Just for a little bit more color. Choose any color you want. And get those specks in there, speckles in there. All right, that's light, but that's good. Okay, so now now I think I'll show you the card because I forgot to do that. The card base is Blackberry Bliss. I think it just really, really uh, makes the gorgeous grape and the, um, in, the, in the card stand out more. 
and then look at the sunflower behind the um, what I call cluster of flowers and then look at the alphabet set cut out of this floral design. So all you have to do now is take your letters and place them in an area where you'll get multiple colors. Then I go to my tape or your wash, your washi tape or your post-it note tape and I set it down so I can cut out the letters and they will look like this instead of just solid letters. Here is the O. Here is, hi Margaret. That's the L. Let's do the E. I'm gonna get some yellow in there. L. And I love that this alphabet set has two L's in it so I don't have to go over. Thanks for sharing, Margaret. I appreciate that so much. Okay. So let me see what my um, cut and emboss machine is on right now. If it's on the fold, yeah, if it's on the folder. So let's move this over right now. I'll come back to it in a second. I have two pieces of four by five and a quarter that we're gonna emboss with the polka dot folder. Okay, so the polka dot, the 3D basic folders are all 3D, like I just said. So we know we need platform one and platform four for 3D folders. And I've always taught you to look for the black line that's on the folders and place your cardstock, the bottom of your cardstock on that black straight line to help you stay straight. So this one is gonna go on the front of the card, so we're gonna do the whole thing. I forgot to show you the inside of the card, but on the inside of the card, oh, here it is. Nice, big, bold polka dots. On the inside of the card, I'm only gonna do a few rows. And I don't know if I'm gonna get it straight or not, but what I'm trying to do is line up a line of dots there. The trick is not to move it when you get it in to the machine, but if you do, it's okay because I'm gonna add flowers on there and if it's crooked, it's not even gonna show. I happened to get that one straight, so lucky me. Okay, now I'm gonna set this up for the alphabet. Well, this one's not as scratched up as this one, so I will change those around. Now I am going to go to my stamping. The O wants to keep moving on me. And you don't have to have them straight or anything because all we're looking for is the color and the floral pattern in the letters. Hi, Carol. Okay, remove the tape. And this one is going to need a little poke to come out. See how pretty, oops, too close. See how pretty that is? Oh my gosh. Just really, really nice. Then the L, some of them just fall right out. That L fell right out. So did this, so did the other one. So I'll put these back in my container. Let's see what the E did. I think the E fell out as well. And how about our H? 
that one wants me to poke at it. So I will. And this is what you've got left over. So if you add, if you got that straight, if you purposely got it straight and you add a color behind it, you can use that as well. But that's for another day. Okay, so let's poke this H out. And we have all our pieces. Okay, for the inside of the card, which I will show you now. Hi, Pamela. I just added some of the embossed flowers on the inside. Let me grab a couple. So this is what I was saying. If you got it crooked, this one's straight, but if you happen to get it a little crooked, this is going to hide your lines for you. Let me get a couple of different colors. And then some greenery, right like that. Isn't that pretty for the inside? And then I'm going to leave the no sentiment there so whoever wins this card can use it for whatever they want to because it says hello, so that's very generic. And you can use it for whatever reason. And I'm keeping these flat. Okay. So here is my card base. <clears throat> it is uh, four and a quarter by 11. Portrait style card. And I am not going to put down, I'm not going to glue this down yet because look at that ribbon on there. Can you see it? It's white on white, but it's behind here. So I don't want to put it down. I don't want to glue this down so I can get the ribbon on in a minute. So that's what I always teach my, hi, Dominga. I always teach my customers, check out the card. And if you see ribbon goes behind the layer piece, Make sure that you get your ribbon on first, otherwise there'll be an uh-oh moment, right? So I think the inside of this card is just precious with these flowers and leaves. Okay, so now let's build onto this layer piece. One of my bits of advice for the alphabet, well, I'm going to turn them over. Love the inside piece. Oh, good, I'm glad. I'm gonna turn these all over so I can add glue to them. H, E, L, L, O. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my nails are getting a little bit long, just a little bit. It's probably short to you guys, but I can't, you, you'll see me grabbing at things and fumbling because I'm not used to long nails ever, all, ever. It's just not me, but they grew. They just grew, and I said, oh, well, they're growing, so I'm going to polish them and go with it. And I used this this morning, and it flowed easy. Come on. I guess I need to check this every single time I'm going to go live because checking it in the morning it's not flowing so you can use the um, adhesive sheets on this or your fine point and I'm not going to mess with this much longer get frustrated so I I'm actually pretty good with this now that I said that I'll make a mess but I do need my silicone matte since I'm going to use the regular glue. So everybody knows what the silicone mat is, I think. If you get glue anywhere on it, it's going to dry and it's going to be easily removed from the mat. 
so you're not getting glue all over your uh, tabletop or your scrap paper that you have underneath you or anything like that. So it just saves a lot of headache. See how I got glue right there? That's going to dry up and be fine. Okay, you want to go real light if you're using your Tombow regular um, applicator because if you squeeze, a lot will come out. Okay, so my trick on lining this up. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I get so frustrated lining up letters. Well, if you're one of those that gets frustrated, let me give you a little hint. Instead of putting down hello, H-E-L-L-O, let's start with the O and let's use the bottom of the cardstock and the edge of the cardstock as our guide. So we will not be frustrated at all about it being straight. You can just look at your spacing as you're laying them and move them because you're using glue and there's no frustration in this at all. It's gonna be straight because we have a guide. What do you think of these colorful letters? Do you like them? Do you like that technique? You could also do that with DSP if you wanted to. If you don't have the stamp set and you just want colorful um, sentiment, it could say love, it could say hi, it could be a name. You can use designer series paper for that. So next, the sunflower. So I took the sunflower dye and I pounced the ink like I showed you on Sunday and I got a really nice smooth colored sunflower but let me get I was going to tell you if you want it darker I have a little trick for you let's see here here's the sunflower oh it's out already forgot that here's the sunflower dye See how intricate and small the lines are? So pouncing on there, you're gonna have a very light color. But if you take your reinker, I always shake them for some reason, and you reink your brush or your dauber, whatever method you choose to put the ink on, then this is such concentrated liquid ink that of course it's gonna get into your paper much dark, I mean into your dye much darker and you're gonna get a darker color. Let me turn around and put it on a piece of white cardstock and show you what I'm talking about. take my brush with this specific die and then my pokey tool actually it's not called a pokey tool but that's what I call it sometimes and I have a much darker sunflower than if I would have pounced with the ink pad and the brush. Okay, so that's a little trick for the, the thinner dyes you want to use. See all that color in there? 
So I love this so much behind these flowers that I have a bunch of them made already in my tray so I can just grab. Okay. So let me clean this off. A mess aggravates me. Does a mess aggravate you? Does it get on your nerves or make you a little antsy? It does me. I got to clean up my spot every time. It's just been, I don't know. OCD? Don't want to say I am, but maybe I am. Okay, so I'm just going to glue down the back, the wide part of the sunflower, because I like the, the actual petals of the sunflower. See there? To stand up. And then I'm going to take one of the embossed well, it's not embossed, but pounced roses. You need to clean as you work too. And I'm gonna just glue a bottom part of that down. Then I'm going to take another one. Because they're in my tray, I just have to grab and go. I love that. And then a small yellow one, smaller yellow one, I should say, over here. This is going to go on the top of the rose. And then I can start working from underneath with my leaves. Now the small leaves I think I only have light ones left, so I have to make more dark ones. I'm going to add a little bit of glue at the tip of these on the top, and I'm going to add them right in here. That one's there, and this one underneath. Hi, Annie. Welcome. I love to have my downline here. I love to see them all. You know, this is training for them too. Um, if they're going to have a class, they can they can copy. Debbie um, Ontario's in my group. Annie's in my group. Um, who else did I see that was here? That's in my group. I think I saw somebody else. Okay. Okay, so by adding the glue to the top of the images, it now sticks to the bottom of the sunflowers and the bottom or the top of the flowers. So they, um, they can move around. Now, I do something that's pretty weird. I, <laughs> I don't know if it's my imagination or what, but I, years ago, went, and this lasts forever and a day, I went and bought a really inexpensive hairspray. Well, what does hairspray do? Hairspray makes our hair... Um, stiffer so it doesn't it's not fly away in the weather right or it stays in place like we want it to so I was wondering what it would do to my stamps to my stamped images if I used hairspray on them well did you guys could you see that when I sprayed it and I sprayed it pretty good did you see how everything got a little bit darker in color okay and the hairspray smells good too so get one that smells good then I'm just going to take my, my flowers. I didn't use a bone folder on anything. And I'm just going to play with them a little bit. But because they're wet, they're going to start to curl on their own and stay stiff like that as it dries. Crazy, huh? Hi, Roseanne. Okay, more hairspray. It doesn't. It doesn't make the ink run, which I, you know, when I first thought of trying to do this, I was worried about that. But there we go. So we've got. See how this one lifted? There's not a dimensional under there or anything. This one just lifted on its own, and then you can help it if you want to to do 
what you want it to do. All right, so now, ribbon. I used ribbon. Um, I'm going to use the length of my a grid paper here twice because I'm doubling it. I talked about on Sunday how I like to make double bows, but I was teaching you the curly, curling the ribbon with the heat tool, so I didn't double that time. So this time I'm doubling it, getting it even, and going underneath my paper. So the um, the sunflower has a lot of spaces in it that a lot of voids. So I can take the end of my ribbon and stick it right in one of the voids. and pull it through. Then I'll take the other end, which has the loop still, and put it through another void that's right next to the first one that I just did, and pull it through. hanging on that leaf there. Okay, so now I'm going to pull them both ends and just tie a bow. And you can get your bow up close to the flowers. And then pull down on the little legs. I've taught you to tap on the loops and it separates them. See that? And you have a double bow right under your, right within the bouquet. Go back to your ribbon scissors and snip the loop. then make these as long as short as you want and clip the ends. Oh, I see some hearts. You like that. Then you can come over here to your edges and separate the two. And you have more design there under your card. Okay, I'm going to help this a little bit. It's, it's still wet. When it dries, it's going to stay the way I'm forming them. Okay, let's go to our card base and my glue. And I think I want a little something, something. Did, I am totally in love with linen thread, but I'm not going to do the technique I've been doing for about a month now with linen thread. I'm just gonna double the bow as well, but I'm gonna show you the difference. See this one? The linen thread is just right here. This one is without, so you decide if you like it or not and add it or not. So I'm taking my linen thread. Gosh, this one's pretty new and I've already running out, but I bought like five of them. <clears throat> and I'm going to double this as well and just do what I did with the white. Then I'm going to get a mini glue dot. I want my loops to be pretty substantial, these loops here. And I'm going to stick the knot of this one underneath the knot of the white one and just let it let it be it naturally curls just has these loose curl about it so I don't like to cut it too short and let the little curls do their thing
Okay, so you learned about using your stamps to have your alphabets, multiple colors, and a floral design, weaving the ribbon in between the sunflower voids, using hairspray um, to wet your stamps and your regular uh, inks will not run and it will harden the paper just like it does your, your hair and it will stay the way you want it to stay. You can keep adding hairspray and playing with it until it's dried the way you want it to dry. Okay, oh good, Debbie, I'm glad you like it. I hope you all like it. I wasn't looking up, I don't know if I got stars or, not stars, um, hearts or not, but oh, I forgot one other thing, the milky dots. I just looked and I said, why isn't this sparkling at me? Because the milky dots aren't there. All right, let's put one here, so that's two. So I either have to put three and leave it, or put five, and I feel generous today, so I will put five. There's my hearts. All right, you guys, hearts are great for Valentine's Day. I hope whatever you've decided to do, if anything, um, that you have a great time, and I will see you. Thank you, Latrice. I will see you on um, Sunday. Okay, take care. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.